a boy Malachos for Zamulte. Pace him with Malchus. Pace him with Rocha. Achraza was his Memaher, Mizares. Bias vis Galus, Mashiach Tikenu. Zwal Uisprof to Zaman Yahia, the name of Mereno Verabeno Melacha Moshiach, Leilam Void. We have a full packed uh, schedule for tonight. And the first thing on the schedule is the Galus Lene Basar. And therefore, Melech HaMashiach himself is going to make a say there. And then we're going to be told exactly what to do, how to do, when to do in the Beis Amikdash. And on the menu we have not little uh, fish balls, but we're going to be having the uh, Livyasan. <coughs> and then the next course, presumably, is going to be the Sharabar. And everybody is reminded to make sure to eat and drink something in between the fish and the flesh of the Livyasan, the Sharabar. So we're going to have Yaina Meshumar. We're going to hear the Teirah Hadashim Mipiv Shal Moshiach Tzidkenu. In the meantime, until that moment, so in order to do our share of Kabbalah Spnei Moshiach Tzidkenu B'Pel Mamish, so we have a lineup over here of various inspiring speakers. Before we continue, though, and before I call up the first Shliach who came uh, to be with us tonight. And that is a shliach who came. Is the mic working? Do I need a mic? Ah, it's working. Here we go. I just hold it for the looks, huh? <coughs> and before I call up Rabbi Borenstein to lead us in the Rebbe Melch Hamashiach's capital, I would like to give a birchas hedyoit to an individual. I'm surrounded over here by kehanim, sitting up over here, the violet, the head. I'm the only one that's not a kohen. So either I should feel out of place, or um, we're coming to that point, as the Balatorium says. <coughs> I want to give a birchas hedyot to one of the kehanim up here, a person who, um, to you local people, he needs no introduction. And this is, of course, our very own, your very own, Reb Chaim Yitzchak HaKoyen, who works self selflessly, and I don't think anyone here can imagine, I certainly cannot, what he does behind the scenes, how hard he works. Many of you local people think you know. I don't think we really know uh, all the efforts and how he's working for one purpose and for one cause, and that is to be poiled this galus. He's doing it with akshonis. He's doing it beyond his koiches, saibegashmias, on all levels, in his heart, beyond, in his head, beyond, his pocket, beyond. So the Ebishter am Gebin Keiches, that as we're holding Mamish, Mamish, Mamish by, by, by the, the, the Iskalus, that he should be able to not only continue and then, Chas V'Sholem, to stop because he's accomplished what he had to do and he brought about Mashiach to uh, London, but then, Erst Avayd is going to be, but then we're going to be able to do it with tremendous kaychas and with tremendous simcha. So, Mele, Reb Chaim Yitzchak, so Debeshter, Dir Benshin, Bechol Tuv Sela, Bakoil, Mikoil, Koil, Begash, Miosef, Ruchnius, Hobna Chobos Adas, Luchas Anefesh, Luchas Aguf, Gesund, Alle Zachen, Von Aleph Bees Tov, Lachaim Lachaim, Lachaim Badia Varchem. As mentioned at this point, as is the minog by many uh, kinusim, when we get together, so we start off. It's working. So we start off with saying the capital of the Reb Melch Hamoshiach, and just to mention, actually, it's a takon of the Baal Shem Tiv, <coughs> that every individual has their own capital kilim according to their age. And everyone is supposed to say daily their own capital. 
And Farshtet Zichal Tzachsidim, first and foremost, before being an individual, you're part of the bigger picture. So you have the capital of Melech HaMashiach, which we are noyeg to say. There's a few things that Chassidim are noyeg. It's brought down in Sefer Amin Hagim. And now that we're coming, Bamshik to Rosh Hashanah L'Chassidis. So Darkei HaChassidis. So if I'm not mistaken, it lists three things. Or maybe I'm putting together a few things from different places. Kofanim. What does a Chassid do? So besides saying the capital of their Rebbe, you know that at the end of Shemun Esrei, many people have a minute, and we do it as well, that you say the psukim of your name, a pasuk that starts and ends with the same letter that your name starts and ends. Over there at the end of Shemun Esrei. So Achos, it says the psukim of his Rebbe. And there's actually a letter in Igis Kedesh, where the Rebbe Melch HaMashiach explains what his psukim are, because there's actually a, a Mashiach take a pasuk for the second name, Magdil or Migdil Yeshua's Malke Vesa Chesed Lim Shichoi, the David of Zarat Elam starts with a mem and ends with a lamid. The Rebbe Lacham Sheikh says, no, that the pasuk for his name is Matayvu Elach Yang Mishkan Esach Yisrael. So that's what we say because there's a klar uh, klar hayra in um, in Igres Kedesh. Likewise, when it comes to benching, Birchas Hamazin, so all the harachmans over there, you give a bracha and you can say whatever you want over there, basically. So in Chabad we stick to the text that's in the Siddur, but others have a minig that they give a bracha to the Balabas and then and Megita Sach Brachas over there. So by us we have a minig that a Chosid says a bracha of Harachamon or Yuvarech, and then you say Adineinu, Meireinu, Verabeinu, Melech HaMoshiach. And it even brings down and say from Minhagim. Say from Minhagim is back in the, in the Chofs, so it doesn't say Melech HaMoshiach, but that's the Indian. As a Chosid says a bracha, a Hartzik a bracha of Harachamon. So you have saying the capital. Saying the psukim and saying the rachamon, so at least a few times a day, you seriously are thinking about Melech Hamoshiach in a very real way, in a very personal way. So, without any further ado, I would like to call upon Harav Elio David Hakoyin Borenstein to lead us in the Rebbe Melech Hamoshiach's capital, Tilim Kuf Tes Zayin. Ich <laughs> Han und Sal <laughs> Kais Yishwai says so the <laughs> 
We also said the Rebbe Tzun's Kapitul, the Rebbe considered her like the mother. When the Rebbe Tzun passed away, the Rebbe said to be Madiyah the Shluchim, the Kinder the Shluchim. So if we're the children, she's the mother, and you say also for your father and for your mother. Uh, before we continue, we're going to have the, the music. I just want to, again, as mentioned, Anjutas Kislev, we just started Hayim Yoyim. So, with your indulgence, I would like to learn with you the Hayim Yoyim for this past day, Chof Aleph, and for tonight. Hayim Yoyim for Chof Aleph Kislev, Shiurim Chumish, Tehillim Panya. If those don't understand, and people should learn Each person according to their ability. Whatever you can do, learn Mishnayis Balpe. And as you're walking down the street, you have Mishnayis. And through doing that, you will merit to be Makabal Pnei Moshiach. Chsidim darf and learn Chsidis. Stam Chsidim, Yim Sheni, Yim Chamishi, Vim Ashabos. Tmimim, Shachas Pachol Yim. And if you want to call yourself a Chasid, and we're coming from Shashana la Chsidis, so you have to learn Chsidis. How much Chsidis do you have to learn? So if you're Stam a Chasid, Pashas, that means that you didn't learn in Temchit Mimim. So you have to learn an hour, uh, you have to learn, uh, sorry, a Monday, Thursday, and Shabbos. If you are a Tomim, and the Pashtas Pshat over here is that you're no longer in Teim Chet Mimim because there's a Seda Yeshiva there which is more than an hour. But if you learn in Teim Chet Mimim, that means that forever you carry the title Atomim, so you have to learn an hour of Chesidus a day. Hayyem Yayim for Chaf Beis Kislev. Shiurim Chumish Tilem Tanya. Mitakona is Kveit Kedusha Saad Murshlita. Loi Mar Bechal Boiker Acharat Fila. So the original Hayyim Yim came out during the Nesiyas of the Rebbe Rayatz. So when it says, Hakad Murshlit, it's referring to the Rebbe Rayatz. One of the Takonis of the Rebbe Rayatz is that every morning after Davenin, every single day without exception, you say the Tilim as it's divided up for the days of the month, and if there's a minion afterwards, a Kaddish Yasim is said. And a month that only has 29 days, so on Yim Chavtes you say for both days, for Chavtes and for Lamid. And, uh, <laughs> Seventies, Chalukah. We have over here with us a Yid 
It was a member who was a local, who came from very far, all the way from uh, a few blocks away, wherever he lives. Um, you know, Mimoshe, Mimoshe, like Kam Kimoshe, we have over here, Rabbi Cheskel, Moses, who's going to be mechabed us, and be able to participate with his siyum. So he's going to make a siyum of a masechta or two. So, Rabbi Cheskel, Bechavid. Everything is, uh, is this working on? Everything is Bashkach Apratis. And there's something that I would like to say before I do the scene, um, which, which really, really, we see this Yat and we see the Ashkach Apratis on a daily basis. There is a base of Medrash very close to me where sometimes I go, I give brochures, I give uh, Dibre uh, Chizuk from the Rebbe, Melech HaMashiach. And we've seen tremendous, tremendous um, Siyate Deshmaya, how the Rebbe's involved, the Rebbe comes in dreams to the people who are running the place. And just this week I was there, when I walked in, they said to me, you know, it's Yutas Kislev, you have to say something. And there was a particular individual who was in the base of Medrash, Talmud Chacham, and he says to me, that, what does he remember about Yutas Kislev? And he's thinking, and he's thinking, what did I think about Yutas Kislev? And he says, oh, I remember. He said that the Alter Rebbe once wrote on a petty cotton, he wrote that anybody who learns the Mispeshuris of Tanya and says, Rebbe Heshi'eni, Rebbe Heshi'eni, Rebbe Heshi'eni, three times, I'll come and I'll say, I went home and I got a message from my wife, who's a high music sent it on a, like on a, small, on a smaller scale than this one, and I was absolutely taken away from it, blown away. We say that women have a, have like a vina yusera. They have a sheer tanya, which they do. It goes on for 40 days. And they're, they're learning tanya. And they have a tremendous siyata dishmaya. What is it? That this is in the air. And let me just, before I do the siyam, let me just go through this amazing thing that I think that's at Sava Shah. It's something that came as a result of this Yutes Kislev. And let's take in mind the fact that last year Yutes Kislev, Trump came in. And now this, that this year Yutes Kislev is proclaiming that Yushalayim is a city which belongs to the Eden. Obviously we understand that the Abish is behind everything. But this is a Shlav in Geula. This is so amazing that the, the Alter Rebbe is involved. <clears throat> It's a schooler from the Sefer Tanya brought down from a tzaddik, a Rav Yerim Abijel, who was a Kabbalist who was very, very close to Motre Leo um, and um, Rabbi Leo, and um, he gave a shurim up to 400 uh, uh, people in Tanya. And he took the union of the, of the Alter Rebbe to really, really amazing heights. He writes in his Sefer Betsu Yorei, and this is uh, L'Shem Koche, word for word, without any additions. The Balatanya promised, any person who be Mesameyach in my Simcha, I will take him out, Min HaMeitzah El HaMerchev, I'll take him out from any situation where he's having problems, El HaMerchev, Min HaGashmis El HaRuchnis, I'll take him out from Gashmis to Ruchnis, Min HaGehenem El Ganeiden, I'll take him out from Ganeiden to Ganeiden, so after the Petira of the Balatanya, they found this little peta. This is it. This is what he was saying. Open Ruach HaKadosh. He, there was, he found a peta caught in a small uh, piece of paper, which was written on it, uh, in the Ksav Yad, yad of uh, the Alter Rebbe, that anybody who connects himself to Sefer Tanya, if Khalila he finds himself in Tzora or in a Metzuka, Kolshi, whatever Tzora it is, he should read a few Shuras of Tanya, and after that, he should say from Oymik three times, Rebbe Hoshieni, Rebbe Hoshieni, Rebbe Hoshieni. And immediately on that day, he will see a Yeshua Mamish in a way of Ness and Pella. 
Now this was, he was a Kabbalist. He was a guy who saw real, you know, um, he saw see, real Siyate de Shemaya. The Balatanya le'elam le'inishachayim. The Balatanya will never be owing. What he command, what he was maptiach, he will keep. And he said, I checked this out time and time again, thousands of times. Every time I had a problem, he's talking about himself. Any problem I had, and I needed a Yeshua, I asked the Aza of the Balatanya, and immediately in that rega, there came the Yeshua. So he felt, Mama, she was really, really connecting to the Indian of Tanya. He gave Shurim, he was very involved in the Tanya, in all, all kinds of ways, amazing ways. Anybody who is kosher to the Sefer Tanya has to know. Im Khalilo Hunimsa Beizamatsuka, if you find yourself in any Taurus or any Hefsad, you're losing money, Khaswashalam. Or Ibaiza Mu'uko, any situation which is negative. Bukhalki Yotzabazer. If he reads a few lines of Sefer Tanya and afterwards he says three times, Rebbi Hoshieni, Rebbi Hoshieni, Rebbi Hoshieni, immediately on that day he will see Baez Hashem, a tremendous Yeshua. Anoshim, Rabim, Nisu, a lot of people tried the situation, and they were matzliach begodel, he says. Mi shiyotzel and asiya rechoikah, somebody goes on a far, on a long trip, or a flight, he should take with him the Sefer Atanya, and it's certain that he will get to the place he needs, l'chaim tovim l'sholem, without any problem, and he'll return in peace. Anybody who stands in front of a judgment, any, any mishpat ro, any bad judgment, right? We should take with him the Sefer Tanya to the courthouse, and with the Ezra Hashem, he will see miracles. He will see ployers. Anybody who goes in a car, in order that he shouldn't have any accidents, he should take the Tanya. Also, in order to be Shoma from any Sakona Bedrochem, any dangers on the way, he should be Makbid to, to take in his car the Sefer Tanya. Somebody who's making a Chasna, a daughter or a son, and he wants the chasna should masliach, he shouldn't go to the place where the marriage is until he reads a few shuras of the Sefer Hatanya. And he says, Rebbe Hashieni. And this chus, the chasna will be mutzlechus b'yaysa, the chasna will be very, very successful. Anybody who needs to go for an operation or anything like that should read a few shuras of Sefer Hatanya, and he should say, Rebbe Hashieni. And with this chus, with this chus, the, the operation will go in success because the Balatanya is the diamond which is in the which is in the crown of Akadish Baruchu. Okay, Ashrov Ashri Helka Shalmisha Zeicha Lishabla Balatanya. Blessed is anybody who can make this connection to the Balatanya through learning his Sefer, Sefer Tanya, and he will be Zeicha to Yeshua is in the place. Bebona Chaya Mezena, Bebona Zereshal Kayoma, Obonim of Nebonim, Oiskim Batari Mitzvahs. Children will be Oiskim Mitzvahs, Tevim with Slochim, Behochim with Dafi Yashom, they're going the right way. Chaya Brias Tevarafur. So this is very, very interesting. This is not something we've seen before, but we see that it was a Tzavah Shoah. This is like coming to give us like a Yeshua, giving us something that we didn't have before. It's, oh, it's amazing, and specifically when we see. And we see what's, go what's going on in the world, where on Yutis Kislev, these Yeshuas are happening. It's a very, it gives us a lot of mechizah. Um, now, just to go to the, to the two siyumim, um, right. Just um, Gemara Tainis, towards the end of Gemara Tainis, um, it says, it talks about Tubiyov and all the... Um, all the uh, special things that happened on, tu on Tuviyov, and it talks about Chasnas and the fact that the, the Menos Yisrael would go out and they would uh, look for husbands. But just finishing off in this Mesechta, it's a tremendous Mesechta. It talks about tremendous people, tremendous Talmidei Chachomim, who we're talking about Yeshuas from the Flois, Chayni Hamago, Rebbe Chanina Ben Deysa. The stories are absolutely amazing. And it says in the, it says in the Masechet, it talks about the union of rain, and it was certain that Yutas Gisla was going to be some rain, because it shows it's a big it's a big So uh, towards the end, in the Mishnah in the Mishnah it says in the end of Tanis, Yisrael They used to go out in the um, or, the uh, vineyards 
um, to, they were looking for husbands. Tonu Abraisa, Misha in Laisha, Nifleisham. Anybody who didn't have a wife would go there. The Mishnah is Mamshiv. Miyuchos Shebein Oyomis Bocha. The ones who were Miyuchos, they said Bocha So Necho, etc. The the Tonu Rabbanu Abraisa, Yofiyofos Shebein Mai Oyomis. The beautiful ones. What would they say? Tnu Enechem LeYofi. Look at the Yofi, the beauty. Shein Isha Ela LeYofi. So they say that the Isha is only for Yofi. Miyuchos Shebein. Ma your omeris, what did the miyuchas say? To know when eich and mishpacha, look at the mishpacha, the yichas is important. If you say no isha, ela le bonim. A woman is only for bonim, the nyav yichas, and etc. Mukhaari shabahem, the ones who weren't so beautiful, ma your omeris, chu mechachem le shum shemaim. Take your your uh, position le shum shemaim. Levachet ha trenev le zahubim. Give us nice uh, jewelry and nice gold and silver, whatever. So the Gemara now uh, is talking about um, the fact that they were making circles in the Kromim. So now it talks about the main thing that we, we, we're oisik in, Yoni Bias Mashiach. So the, it says, Osid HaKadosh Baruch Hu Laisis Mochel LaTzadikim. HaKadosh Baruch is going to make a circle for the Tzadikim, um, for the Tzadikim, Lossed Lave. Oma Ula, Bira, Ula Bira said, Omer Belaza, Osid HaKadosh Baruch Hu Lysis Mochel to make a circle that Sadikim with Yoshi Benayim, a Kodesh Baruch is going to sit with them within the circle, Began Eden, the Kolech of Echad Marabetz boy, everybody's going to uh, point out, Elov, uh, Eimah Mashanem, it says in Yishai Chofei Tes, Voma Biyema Hu, and we will say in that day, in Elekeinu Zeh, this is our God, Kivinu Lo, we waited for him, we were Makavah to him, as we know, the Inof Kivui is stamped just to have the Kivui, that's, that's Zoycha to bring, to bring the Geulah. We will dance and we will rejoice in his salvation. Okay, now we finish Mesechta Kedushin. So the Gemara finishes off about a very good job. Tanya Bebraisa, Rabbi Yomer. There is no umnes that goes away from the world. Obviously, the job is uh, important. Ashrei mi shereyes chira, who sees, blessed is the one who sees his children, but umnes ma'ula, they have a good job. Oi loy le mi shereyes chira, but umnes paguma. Woe is the person who sees his children doing a job which is not so good. The Brysa continues and gives us examples. E esher le'elam v'loy basam. It's impossible to the world without somebody who makes nice smelling uh, um, items. A person, a tanner, which is a bad smell, right? Ashrei mi shum nasi basam. Blessed is the one who makes nice smelling uh, items. mi shum nasi Somebody who does a tanner. Woe to him, it's like a, not a very good job. The world can't exist without males and females. Mikol mokim. Ashrei mi shebonu scharim blesses the one who has males, but oi loy le mi shebonu the cave shebonu the caves that he has a uh, word to the one who has daughters. Obviously, we don't understand what it means to say ben sira. It brought down in uh, ben sira um, set, explains that basically what it means is when a husband when a, when a, when a father has daughters, he's always worried about the girls. When they're younger, he's worried about when, they, when they're small. And when they get older, he's worried. When they get married, he's worried whether they're going to have children. That's what it means. That is, it never has, it never uh, relaxed in, this, in that situation. Rabbi Meir, Omer, Rabbi Meir says, One should teach his child a good, clean job. And he should ask the one who's got the wealth. The job is not an union of poor. A poorness doesn't come as a result of a job. And a shiris is not as a result of a job. The one who has Oisha, he is the one we have to turn to. Shanem, as it says, Li ha kesef, li hazov. To me is the kesef, for me is the gold. No mashem to voice, so always. To realize that in a job you have to you have to put your 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 betochen in the avishta. That's where that's where the bracha comes. We say in our mission, Rabbi Shimon ben Loza Eimer. Eimer isim yomecha. Did you ever see um, a wild beast? Yeah, that it, that it had a job. It hasn't got a job, right? But it still has panosa. Tanya, we learned in a bracer. Rabbi Shimon ben Loza Eimer. 
Miyomi I never saw a deer um, drying out dates, uh, drying out dates like a job. Vari and a lion sabal carrying items on its back. Vishul Khenveni and a shopkeeper of box, right? And they don't have any problems with money. They don't have any problems. They don't have to go and worry about Panosa. They were only created to serve me. That's an amazing thing. We were created to serve HaKadosh Baruch. And the Rebbe says a lot. I've seen a lot in Sikhas. Where the Rebbe says, we were, we've been given this amazing thing. We've been given to serve HaKadosh Baruch. We're going to have everything we need. These that were only created, they have their food, they're, they're relaxed. You go to a field, you see how they're relaxed, they've got no problems, right? They're I was created to serve a Kaddish Baruch to do our Veda of Hashem, ain't a din she spana shlebitza. It's 100% that I'm gonna, I'm gonna be mefana shlebitza. Ela shara oisi es maisi. I've done something, we've done something negative. Vikibachtis panosos, I've held back my panos. Shneem, it says, yumiyo, hei chop hei, avoino seichem hitu. It's the sins that's hold it back. Rebbe Nehoi, Rebbe Nehoi Rai, Oime, Rebbe Nehoi says, mani echani kol umnes v'chula, I leave all the jobs, and the best job is learning Torah. Tanya, we learn in a brisa. Rebbe Nehoi Rai, Oime, mani echani kol umnes v'chula, I leave all the jobs in the world. I will only teach my child Torah. All the jobs in the world don't stand in the end. Only when you're young. When you're old, you get to retirement situation. could have be, be, uh, no food. Torah is not like that. It stays by a person when he's young. When the senes loy achas and tikkun basic nus and it gives him strength when he's old. Beis yal dusim ma'ayim. What does it say when he's young? The kaveh Hashem yachlifu koyach. Those who are strengthened to Hashem, they'll have koyach. Yalu eiver k'nesharim will have wings like an eagle. Basic nusim ma'ayim. What does it say when he's old? Oid yinuvim b'seiva. They will be uh, very very uh, good in in their old age. Yesheni brananim yeyu. Hadn lo chasari yosim v'slich lo mesatnes kedushin. Hadn lo chasari yosim v'slich lo mesatnes kedushin. Hadn lo chasari yosim v'slich lo mesatnes kedushin. I just before I do the hadron, I just like to say that um, there was something that uh, I I I learned in the Gemara kedushin that really had a very strong effect on me. It's a story of Doma ben Esina. He talks about Talmidei Chachamim. A Talmidei Chachamim, you have to have respect for Talmidei Chachamim. And the tremendous bracha you get as a, as a result, obviously as Hasidim of the Rebbe, if we connect to the Rebbe, we connect to the, the Alter Rebbe, we connect to Hasidim, then we're Mamshech, the biggest, the biggest bracha. It talks about having respect for Rabbonim, and it goes through many, many stories of Gadita. But there was one story, and it's connected to uh, Yaakov Avinu, connected with, with how Esau, who's afraid of Esau, why? Because of Kibbut of Eim. You're talking about a Goy, Doma Ben Nesina, who was a Goy, and nevertheless, he had kibbutz of aim, and he could have he lost a lot of money as a result. Could have lost a lot of money. Uh, immediately after that, the Kaddish Baruch Hu blessed him with tremendous hashiras because he came back to him and he asked him for the uh, for the para, They asked him for the para duma because he had the para duma which is born into his um, into his herd. So we see how amazing we're talking about a goy. And the tremendous bracha that was brought upon, upon a goy for having kibbutz of aim. How much more so that we should strengthen in the union of kibbutz of aim those who have parents. They should, and even those who don't have parents, but they can mechaber them in, 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 in a special way when it comes to your site, etc. How tremendous, gr tre tremendously great the mitzvah of kibbutz of aim is, and it's my arichas yomim, but all brachas come as a result of that. So I'll just do the Hadron now. Hadron Lov Mesefta Tainis, Mesefta Kedushin. Hadron Lov, Daitin Lov Mesefta Kedushin, the Tainis. But Daitin Lov, Loinis Nashim Lov Mesefta Tainis, the Kedushin, Loinis Nashim Lov. Loin Mahol Madein, Loin Mahol Madeose. Hadron Lov Mesefta Tainis, the Kedushin, the Hadron Lov. Hadron Lov, Daitin Lov Mesefta Kedushin, the Tainis, the Daitin Lov. Loinis Nashim Lov Mesefta Tainis, the Kedushin, Loinis Nashim Lov. Loinis Nashim Lov. Loin Mahol Madein, Loin Mahol Madeose. 
would like to be mechabed. One of our guests who came from Malkin Shlichusai in Italia. He's already there um, for many years, over 40 years. He should continue. And he's preparing over there many communities and a number of cities. No Bologna, yeah? Bologna, Florence, and the Oid, the Oid, the Oid. Harav, Eli David Akoyen Borenstein, please give him your full attention. Is the mic working? Sometimes. Testing, testing. That's it. Chant everybody. Happy to see everybody. Baruch Hashem, it's nice you can get together. Be kaiy to your tzitzit. Chag Agula from the Alter Rebbe. Well, let's start off first thing about the film that was just made on on the Masech of Tainus, a part of the Rebbe. But the uh, but the women, the girls going out to the to the vineyards and and dancing and uh, and telling the bach, the bachrim to pick the right zivuk. It says that the nice the nice looking ladies would say. That you should take us because no. we're the woman is made for her beauty. The women that weren't so beautiful, but they had a nice yichus, they said, choose us because of the woman's to have children. If we come from a nice yichus, we're going to have a nice family for the children. They know each other a little bother. The third type of women, the ones that did that didn't have a yichus and they weren't very nice looking, the chuari shabbat, they would say, chumi kachem l'shem shabbat, marias l'shem shabbat. But with one condition, you should give us a beautiful golden jewelry. Give us nice jewelry. These are the three words. The Rebbe explains us by way of Hashem how you look at it. After Tisha B'Av, which was a time of a richuk between Hashem and uh, the Eden, apparently the Chitzenius was a, was a richuk. Tu B'Av is again the chibur between Hashem and the Jewish people. Hashem is the chassan. The Jewish people are the caliph. So those people that keep Taira mitzvahs, those are the beautiful ones. They say to Hashem, because of our mites and Taivim, because we learn Taira, they accept us. These are the nice looking ones. There are certain people that aren't so observant, they don't learn so much Taira mitzvahs, but they have a nice yichas. My grandfather was a rabbi, my great grandfather, we come from a Chashvim and Mishpacha. They kept mitzvahs. We don't keep so much, but our grandparents keep. It's a chus office, you should accept us, the Mishpacha. We have a yichas. Then you have those Yidin that are so far away that they don't even have a yichus to look backwards that two, three generations before they had very important rabbis in their family. They don't know. They didn't get a chinuch. It's already a few generations and nothing. They don't keep. They don't, they're not observant. They don't like Yishu Nishku. And also their parents, their grandparents are a little bit too far away, too many days. The Chuarish, they don't have anything with what to be proud of. They tell Hashem, you should accept us because we're Jewish, we're your children, we belong to you. For yourself, you're our, you're our creator, our father, accept us as we are. But there's a condition. The condition is that Ubalvat Shetatrun Bisahufim should give us nice, beautiful jewelry. It says that usually Jewish women are very beautiful. The reason why they look a little bit ugly because they're poor. The nice Yisrael Yofi is saying, Elisha Aniyus Benavalto. Because of the Aniyus, they become uh, unpretty. Once they'll have jewelry, a nice thing, they won't be poor anymore. But the beauty, the natural beauty that's there by every Jewish woman will come back out, will become beautiful again. What does that mean, the Aniyus? Ein Osher Elo Pedach. The reason why people are far from Yiddishkeit, they don't have das. They didn't get a Jewish education. They don't know. They don't have a feeling towards Hashem. If Hashem will wake up their neshama, the das is Hashem, to be makir a little bit in Gatlakai, automatically they become closer. It's not their fault. They didn't get a chinuch. They have no hakkara, no yediyah in Gatlakai to be close to Hashem. So they tell Hashem, give us some richness. Richness ain't osher elu pedas. And then we'll become beautiful again with Taylor and Mitzvah. So these are the three kinds of Jews that have to become close to Hashem. Say a word of the Rebbe and the Siyam that you said. Coming back to the to, to, to speech, we prepared a few words. Yutas Kislev, the idea of Pada Visholem Nafshi, when the Alter Rebbe said to, in Tilim, the words Pada Visholem Nafshi, so there was a Padiyah Visholem, Mahashem Visholem. 
He mentions the word many times of Shalom. There's many Mamorim about uh, about part of Shalom Nafshi, but the idea of Shalom. What is what is it's okay, we can hear you. Fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay, hear you fine. Fine. It's fine. It's good. It's perfect. You don't need it. You don't need it. The Rebbe, the Alter Rebbe, wrote a letter in the Gers Hakodesh. It's a Nitzachim, but we have to be mekarev. Even those people that were against us, that didn't accept us, even those that were malshinim, we have to show them a lot of love and bring them closer. By being nice to them, the same face that you show to the water, the same face you get back, you'll show them a lot of love. That's the way to be mekar of them. Not to have a fight with them because of what they did, but to bring them closer towards Yiddishkeit. The Rebbe explains, Kamayim ha'ponim al'ponim has a much deeper meaning over here. Ha'ponim al'ponim means learning chasidus. Why? Because every yid says, Bak shufana is Hashem, es panecha Hashem avakish. How do you have a shachas to pnimis of Hashem by learning pnimis atayr? So the way to love every Jew is by having bakshu panais vanach avaya vakit by learning pnimis atayr. This is the way that you'll wake up your avas Yisrael towards a fellow Jew and feel much closer to him through pnimis atayr. We speak about shalom, but loving every single Jew, being the care of everybody to Hashem to the derech hafsidus. Bechal shalom means achdus, unity, everybody together. When you speak about unity, there are two kinds of unity. For example, you have a minion, everybody counts the same. The biggest salik doesn't count for more than one, or even a simple Jew is not less than one. You have ten different people, everybody's the same, we're united, we all have one minion. The problem is that after the minion, everybody goes away to a different place. This is a Talmud Chochem, it's Tidurin Teirah, the one that, the, that's a business, goes to his business league. The unity is only for a certain amount of time. True unity is a different kind of unity. Everybody is different. They're not the same like by a minion you count every person as one. Everybody is different, but with their diversity, that's where you have the unity. Everybody contributes what he has, what the other one doesn't have. Everybody together makes a complete thing. Like the human body, every part is different. If every part of the body cooperates, they all work together, every part is different. But the feet listen to the head, and they go to where the head tells them to go, and the head guides the feet where to go. That's a healthy person. If the feet don't listen to the head, it means a person's paralyzed. Or if the head doesn't want to tell the feet what to do, it's also no good. It goes together. When everybody does their thing and they contribute what they could do, that's called the true achtos. Each one gives what they have, what the other one doesn't have. Everybody together is different, but together they make a complete jigsaw puzzle. Every piece is different, but all together comes out a much uh, comes out a beautiful picture. That's the hazard from Hasidus, why you have Avas Yisrael. I'm not complete without him, he's not complete without me. Nobody is extra, nobody is superfluous, everybody has something but that. When somebody refuses another yid, he's refusing actually somebody of himself, part of himself. He's not complete without him. That shows a true love. This brings us to have a true love for each other. You're not actually loving somebody else. You're actually loving yourself. He's part of you and you're part of him. It says in Pirkei Ovis, that the Eilam is Kayim on three things. First it says, Then towards the end of the first period, it also adds on, Rabbi Gabriel Eimer, that the Eilam is Kayim on three things. The world exists on three things. Aladin, Vala Emes, Vala Shalom. What's the connection between the three things? Din, judgment, Emes, the truth, and Shalom is peace. What's the connection between the three things? Shinem, where it says, Emes, Mishpat, Shalom, Shiftu, Bisharechem. He brings on a Posik from these three things. If you notice the Posik, Emes or Mishpat, first you have Emes, and then you have Mishpat, which is Din, then you have Shalom. But Rabbi Shimon Megamil says that he says first Din, and then he says Emes. Din, Emes, and Shalom. He changes the Seder. Opposite of what this Pasuk says. The Pasuk says first Emes, and then Din. And he says first Din, and then Emes, in the memory of Rabbi Gamliel. Actually, it's one of the daily Yisrael. We just discovered their uh, their their bakim, uh, their kvura where they are. The the Baal Mishas Chasidim that Al Rebbe says on him Zabar Samche. The Rebbe brings them down many times, and uh, the Rebbe Marash quotes him in the Mamorim. He's brought down in Tanya twice. The the Baal Mishas Chasidim. So he answers on this uh, question. He says 
Actually, the world stands on one thing, Shalom. You can't build a world by yourself. By yourself, you won't get very far. You need cooperation. Everybody has to work together, like a body. If the head will be by itself, it can't, make the, it can't bring a person to success. The feet, the head, the hands, the, the feet, the, the heart, the liver, everybody, everybody has to do their part. When we work together, that's when you have success. That's when we're able to do our tachlis in life. Everybody has to work together. How? By having shalom, everybody cooperates, everybody together does their part, then you have a beautiful result. If each one will do their own thing and not want to have to do with anybody else, you won't get too far, everybody. In order to have shalom, there's a problem. Everybody wants to have peace. I want peace according to my conditions, and he wants peace according to his conditions. I want to be united with everybody, but everybody should do it my way. The other person says, let's get together, but do it my way. Or some people say, my way or the highway. I mean, it's, there's all different uh, views. How do you get together? How do you work together? You have to have a kosovo shlishi v'yachriya You go to a judge, impartial judge, who's not on my side, not on the other fellow's side, and he makes some kind of pshara between us, and we both accept it, and we both get together, and then we're able to work together, and we're able to be successful. In order for that to happen, there has to be before the show, and there has to be something before. It has to be a din emes. If I feel that your judge is taking his side, and he's paid him sheikhan or whatever, or he's, he's, he's not impartial, it's not only not going to bring to Shalom, it's going to bring to Heipachat, it's going to cause the, the fight to be much worse. When can you have Shalom? When you have Din Emes. You have an Emes of Din, then you have Shalom. That's why he puts the Din before Emes. Because you're not going to say Emes Din, you're going to say a Din Emes, that's going to bring toward Shalom. But what makes the world stay is Shalom cooperation, everybody works together. The Rebbe says that Mashiach is for every Jew, this everybody knows, that the Mashiach is coming to save the whole Jewish nation. In order to bring Mashiach, the Baal Shem Tov had Aliyah's Neshama, he went up to the Heichel HaMashiach and he asked him when he's coming. Amos HaKosimar. And Mashiach answered him, The teachings of the Baal Shem Tov will spread all over. So just like Mashiach is for every Jew, every Jew has to prepare for Mashiach, the Eteris HaBal Shem Tov, which is Hasidus, has to be spread to every single Jew. What will Mashiach do? Mashiach will teach us the Sadists of the Torah. What are the secrets of the Torah? The Metzius HaBayri, about HaKadosh Baruch what he is, how he reveals himself, how he has a connection with us. These things are being taught today already in Hasidus. So we taste the food, Erev Shabbos, Tehamer, Chaim Sochel, what's going to be when Mashiach comes? We're already tasting the food beforehand to, to get a feeling what's going to be when Mashiach comes. So just like Mashiach has a connection to every Jew, the learning of Hasidus, which is a preparation for this, is for everybody to, to be prepared for Mashiach. And the former Rebbe said that our mission of our generation is to be Makar of every single Jew, to Yiddishkeit, to Hasidus, every Yid should have a connection, no Jew should be left behind. There's the famous story with Alter Rebbe, with the, with the Mittler Rebbe, with the Kel Yelet Beiche, the child crying, the Alter Rebbe and the Mittler Rebbe lived in the same building, upstairs and downstairs. The Alter Rebbe lived upstairs, the Mittler Rebbe lived downstairs, and the Mittler Rebbe was already married. Each one, they didn't have enough money to buy each one his own home in those days, so they added an extra room to the, to the home. And the Mittler Rebbe lived, the uh, Mittler Rebbe lived downstairs, the Alter Rebbe lived the one floor up. The Mittler Rebbe had a child inside the crib, and the Mittler Rebbe was learning, he was very involved in his learning. The child was playing in the crib and he, and he fell out of the crib onto the floor. The child started to cry. Mittler Rebbe was so involved in his learning, he didn't hear the child crying. The Alter Rebbe was one floor up, much higher. He was also learning at the same time. He heard the child crying, even though he was also involved in learning. The Alter Rebbe hears the child crying and crying. Nobody's taking care of him. The Alter Rebbe stopped learning, went downstairs. He sees the child on the floor. The middle Rebbe is sitting and learning, doesn't even realize what's ha what happened. The Alter Rebbe picked up the child and he comforted the child and put the child back to sleep, back into the crib, put things around it. The child shouldn't fall out, whatever. And he went back upstairs. The middle Rebbe didn't even realize what happened over here. A while later, the Alter Rebbe told his son, no matter how deep you're involved with learning, you cannot fail to hear the cry of a Jewish child. The Rebbe brings down this story that no matter how much we're involved with doing Torah mitzvahs and becoming uh, Talmud Chachamim, there's another Jew nearby that doesn't know about Yiddishkeit, about Chassidus, we have to even stop our learning, go out and help him pick up the child and put it back to its grip. That's the lesson that the Rebbe gave us. Or the same story is brought down. 
with the, with the Tzemach Tzedek, he, he used to have his galus from the Alter Rebbe used to come to him and, and uh, all his fakers, all the doubts that he had when he was learning, he had a bunch of questions that he couldn't answer after this talkus of the Alter Rebbe, he would reveal himself to, to his grandson, to the Tzemach Tzedek, and answer his questions. There was once a time that the Alter Rebbe did not reveal himself to his grandson. And he had a lot of tsar. He had a lot of questions to ask. His grandfather's not coming to him from Elam Ambas to, to answer his questions. He was going to show the Tzemach Tzedek. Somebody came over to him and asked him for a loan. He needs some money, a few rubles, to make a deal in the marketplace. So Tzemach Tzedek tells him, I have money in the house. Come to me after the evening. I'll give you the loan. He goes into shul. And as he's putting on the talis, he remembers, it says in the Gemara, Rabbi Lazar Yoyv Prutalani Vahadr Matzli. The Tzadikim first gave the money to Tzadok, and then they went to Davin. I'm not doing the right thing. He's waiting for the money, and I'm going to Davin. He's going to have to wait and wait until I finish Davening. So he took off his talis, he ran home, he, he got the money, he went to the marketplace. It wasn't so easy to find that, uh, that businessman that needed the loan. He found him, he gave him the money. He came back into Shul, he put on the talus, the Alter Rebbe revealed himself to him, and he answered all his questions. In the schus of helping a person, even stopping with his davening, and helping a person, even on a physical thing, Allah has come of a kama, when you help being the car of a yeti Yiddish guy, the Rebbe comes to you and answers all your questions, and helps you out of your whole situation, and helps you that everything, that everything should work out in the right way. People sometimes complain, they, they spread Yiddishkeit, and they have all kinds of hardships, it's not easy. People were complaining about the free of the Karebbe when he spread Yiddishkeit. There were many things he wanted to do. He didn't complete certain things because there was a lack of money. Or in Russia there were Xeris. Not everything was able to be done as it is. The Rebbe says you shouldn't look at all the hardships when you spread Yiddishkeit. He tells the story of the Rav Magid, who got regards from the Baal Shem Tov. What did Talmidim of the Baal Shem Tov went to the city where the Magid lived? At that time he was a teacher of little children before he became Rebbe. And the Baal Shem Tov told him, if you'll come to the city where my Talmud is, you should give him regards from me. He comes to the city and he wants to know, where is this Rab Dave Bear? Where is he? The big Tzaddik, the big Chochem, the Baal Shem Tov himself sends him regards. People didn't know who he was talking about. Which big Talmud Chochem? Who were you talking about? The, 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 the Magid from Mizrich was a hidden Tzaddik at that time. They told him, if you're looking for a Rab Dave Bear, there's only one in the city here, and he lives in a poor house towards the end of the city. He teaches children. But so he went and he didn't have a choice. If the Baal Shem Tov tells him he's not going to leave the city before he gives him regards, he's going to try. It's the only Rab Dave Bear that they know in the city. He goes into him, he sees a very poor house. He started talking to him. He said, I was talking to Talmud Chacham. And if the Baal Shem Tov is sending me to give you regards, you're a big tzaddik, otherwise the Baal Shem wouldn't send me to give you regards. So he looks at the house, a very poor house, there's no furniture, there's nothing there. So he was shocked. He asked the market, where's your furniture? So the market, before he answered him, asked him, what do you do? He says, I'm a kvir, I have a lot of money, I'm rich, bar Hashem. Where do you live? He told them which city. What kind of furniture do you have? So he tells him the beautiful furniture he has in his house. So the market tells him, I don't understand. I don't see any furniture with you. Where's your furniture? He says, it's at home. Right now I'm traveling, I'm on the way. On the way I don't have my furniture with me. When I come home, that's when I have all my beautiful furniture. So the market answered him, that's true. When you come, this world is only a passageway to travel this world. When you get back home, that's where you get your furniture. You have the beautiful furniture. That was in the aim. Things are different, you have beautiful furniture. The Rebbe says that all those who are spreading seeds, whatever hardships they should have, they should know we're only on the way. We're happy. We should be interested in one thing, to do our shlichas, to spread the, the words of Hashem in the world, the beautiful furniture is over there. Bahadi Kafshid Rahman and Lamalach, the Abishir knows his Khishbainas. We ourselves don't know what kind of pool we do, what kind of effect we have on people. Things that we don't dream of. You can hear sometimes Yazaikha, you hear about it years later. You might you don't even we don't even realize how powerful we are, what kind of ashwa we have on people. We think just things just happen by themselves, or we don't even realize what kind of effect we have. We have to do what we could, and everything else comes from Hashem. The Rebbe says, if a person has hardships, it's best to see this, it's only an Nisoyim, and because Hashem must be marred by our schar, if there would be an easier way to do it, Hashem surely knows the easier ways, He would do it. If, we, he, if Hashem chose for us hardships, means because it's the best way to do it, you'll have the best effect upon yourself and the best effect on, on everybody else, 
the same thing, the person goes through hardships, then they then they become much then they're much more matzlich in, in the shlichus to spread Yiddishkeit all over the world. The cloud the Rebbe wants when he spread Chassidus to do it with love, not to be pushy, not to try to force people to become close to the Chassidus, to show them the beauty of Chassidus, that they themselves should want to have it. It has to be B'derech HaTeva. You can't do something B'Kayach. He gives the example about Kiddush Levonim. When the Alter Rebbe was in jail, they brought him for a mechkar, to, for interrogation, from, from one building to another building. To get to the second building, you had to go across the river. They put the Alter Rebbe into a little ship, into a small boat, and he took him across where they were questioning. While he was in the boat, the Alter Rebbe saw, it was a beautiful Levana, he hadn't made yet Kiddush Levana. So he asked the driver to stop the ship, so he can do Kiddush Levana. You have to have Yeshua Das, when the ship is going, you can't bound yourself very well. So he wanted the ship should stop, he should be able to say Kiddush Levana. The one who drove the ship refused to stop, you're a prisoner, I don't have to listen to you. Suddenly there was a nest and the boat got stuck, it didn't move. It just froze in its spot. No matter how much he tried to push the ship ahead, the ship didn't go. So the guy understood it's because he's a tzaddik, the Alter is a tzaddik, and if he wants, he can by force, he can stop the ship. So Alter said, maybe now you'll give me permission to, 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 to do the Kiddush Levana. The guy said he had no choice. So the guy stopped it. So the Rebbe, the Rebbe puts up a question, if the Alter Rebbe stopped it by force, what do you have to beg the guy for? He could stop the ship by force, the guy doesn't want. He needs the guy to be masking. So the Rebbe answers, a mitzvah has to be done al piderech ha-teva. You can't do a mitzvah by force or by a nest. He didn't want to do Kiddush Levana because he made a nest. He forced the ship to stop. He told the guy, now please stop the ship with your own will. I want to do the mitzvah al piterech. Everything has to be mislabish be gidrei ha-eilam. It should be mislabish in the nature of the world. That's why Hashem wants it. Adir ha-tachtainim, the world from its own part should also accept it. It takes time for the world to accept it. So that's why we have to do everything besedir mesudir. The same answer that the Rebbe gives about Gimel Tamas and Yud Beis Tamas. The beginning of the Gula, as Chal to the Gula was Gimel Tamas. The complete Gula from the Fidik Rebbe was on Yud Beis Tamas. The Rebbe says, why did it take so long from Gimel to Yud Beis Tamas? The Hashem could have made a nest, they should, they should free the former Rebbe from jail right away. Why did it have to take so much time? And the answer the Rebbe gives for the world to accept such a big giveaway, such a nest, it takes time. The world has to absorb it. The world has to be ready for it. To penetrate in the metzias of the world takes time. So it started at Gimel Thomas, it took a while, and uh, a few days later, Yud Beis Thomas was the complete goal, because it takes time, it has to go in, it's at the Gdorim of the world. The world has to be ready for it, so everything takes time till it absorbs. Likewise, the Rebbe says, when you make care of the people, it shouldn't be in a way that is pushed on them, it has to be the people themselves should want it. They should want to have seeds. By showing them the beauty of seeds and, uh, and everything that it teaches, it should make that the people should, themselves should want to become much closer. There are those people who claim about Chassidus that they have their menhagim, they have their ways of living, and their parents were not Chassidim, or especially they weren't Chabad Chassidim. Why should they change? Why should they become Chabad Chassidim? They have the meaning of the same beer, they have the way they lived all the years. What reason they should become also to learn Tanya, to learn Dal Tereb, to learn Chabad Chassidus? Why should they accept something that their parents didn't have? The Rebbe speaks about this, and the Rebbe says that the first Hasidim, in the times of the Rebbe, their parents weren't also Hasidic Chabad. And they didn't have the question, why should we change? There's a new thing in the world, a new thing is added, a beautiful thing is added. Everything has the right time when, they have, when it comes. When a new thing comes, so that was the time, Bashkoch is when a person hears about it, a world, the world goes ahead, there are new things in turn that are constantly being revealed. In the beginning, when people learned Teresh about Ped was only Mishnayis. Later, a time went by, it was also the Gemara. First there were the Tadnoim, then there were the Amairoim. A person can't say in the times of the Gemara, I'm not learning the Gemara, I'm only learning the Mishnah, because my father was in the time of Mishnayis, there was no Gemara in this time. Now that you have Gemara, I don't want to change. It's a time when Hashem made Bashkoch Prat, you should have the Gemara, you have to learn Gemara. Afterwards, you have the Paiskin. As soon as the people say, I don't want to learn any Paiskin, but I want to learn any Shulchan Aruch. My parents learned Gemara, they were before the times of the Paiskin. As things become revealed in the world, 
they take up importance. You have to learn with the latest things which are revealed in the world. I live in Italy. In Italy, we have a special thing that is the first Jewish books ever to be printed in the world were all printed in Italy. The first nine books in Hebrew, nine swarm, the other Chazak, the Ber Nevuchim, the Sefer Lachas Lilith, nine swarm were printed in Rome in the 1460s. That's about 10, 15 years after Gutenberg printed the Bible in, in Mainz in, in Germany, a guy who printed it in Latin. About 15 years later, they started printing Hebrew books. The first place they printed the Hebrew books was in Italy. The first tour was printed in a small town near, near Venice, the first tour. The one who printed it became sick, he passed away. His two children were killed out Kiddush Hashem by the guy in the city. He went through a lot of hardships. And Almana finished by herself with the Letzke Keiches. She finished printing the tour. It was the first time that the, like a type of a Shulchan Aruch was printed was the tour. The tour was printed quite a few times in Italy. After a while, the Beis Yosef in Tzvaz sent his Piske Dinim, his Shulchan Aruch, to Venice to be printed there. That was the printing place at that time in Venice. When they printed the Shulchan Aruch, the tour lost a lot of its importance. People, instead of spending all their time with the tour, they went over to the Piskinim, the Beis Yosem, and Shulchan Aruch. Everything has its time. They dedicated much more time to the Shulchan Aruch. As time goes by and things are added, things take on new, new importance. If an hour do, in the last day, as the Chesidus was in this gala, that, and this is spreading by the Yidin, that's a simon. This is what Hashem wants in this time that we should learn, because there's new things always being in this, in this gala from the day. Another thing which Rebbe answers, there's a new, there's Rachman al-Tzana Machle in our times, which wasn't there years before, that's the Machle, Yana Machle, that people don't even want to call it by its name, Yana Machle, they just say Yana Machle, or Machle, they don't want to say the name. And this didn't exist years before, some of the kind of people didn't know about it, but Rebbe says the Pashim didn't exist before this kind of Machle. It's a very strange Machle. Nothing is ruined. Something is added to the body, not something is taken away from the body, something is added. But the, if you let it grow, Rachman, it eats up also the good parts and it kills off the person, Rachman, on its line. It's, an, it's a new thing. But the scatmus of all the, of all the ideas and all the knowledge, the, the, all the, all the nuchachmas are coming out of the world. People feel more secure, there's a lot more self-confidence and a lot more gaiva and yeshus by people. Because they have the, the, the whole new technology which is out in the world. People think they can do almost everything. So since it's Yashus and Gaiva, Rachman and Islam, it's, it's reflected by Gashmius also, but you have Yana Machla over here. It's a new thing the, the, because, of the, because of the Yashus and the Gaiva. So to knock that down, one of the things that was revealed in the world is the truth is Siddhas. Siddhas knocks down your Yashus, your Metzias. It shows you how you're nothing in the eyes of Hashem and it brings a bit to a person. This is the truth for the hardships, for the, for the mixed marriages, for the assimilation of our generation. That the people didn't have such a hard time with, with a chayshach ruchni like they have today. But ruchni is a lot of machlis, a lot of, we're losing a lot of yidin. So the, the truth for that in our times is like a truth for Yana Machli, which is eating up our nation, is through learning chasidus. This is what gives a care to overcome all these hardships. That we should have Baruch Hashem, because unto Yiddishkeit, we should all become strong. If you look outside, and you see, uh, and you see the matzev of the of people of learn chesidus is mamish mechayin nefoshes. People ask me; they ask a lot of shluchim. How do you manage to stay on shluchim so many years? You hardly have a, a from a yid in your city. People sometimes ask me how many people are shemer shabbos in some of the communities there in Italy. I tell them everybody is a shemer shabbos. Every single person. Everybody a little bit. All together, maybe one Shabbos, from all the people together. The problem is to bring Mashiach, you have to keep two Shabbos. In. And all together, there's with there's only one Shabbos. But it's not their fault. They're Tanekish and Nishbu. They don't know. And if we don't do anything for them, Rachman San will be a complete assimilation. We're going to lose them together. If we don't do, there won't be a next generation who to work with because they won't be around anymore because we'll be completely assimilated. It's Mamish and Tzolos and Foshers to be in the car of them. So where do you get the Kayach to continue with such a work? The Kayach comes from learning Pnimius Atayr. You have to have a lot of guts, a lot of Kayach. You have to feel the Pnimius of your Neshama to be able to overcome the hardships to be on Shlichus. To be able to do it, you have to be Megala Sosim the Neshmasa, the hidden parts of the Neshama. How are you, do you reveal that? By learning the hidden parts of the Tayr, it brings out the hidden parts of your Neshama, you should have the Kayach. If you don't, you have the revealed parts. And not always are the revealed parts of your Neshama strong enough to overcome all the hardships. You need a lot of Kayachs for that. It's interesting to say for the shluchim that the Rebbe once said in a sikha that some of the shluchim come around with a complaint. 
I'm working, I'm working, I'm working. I don't see too much results. I see very few results. I don't see a very big atzlocha. If I'm already putting in my time, I want to see atzlocha. I want to see payers. If I'm working, I'm working. It's useless if I don't see atzlocha. If I see only little atzlocha, it doesn't stimulate me. So Rebbe promised the shluchim, if they'll go to the mikveh every day, and they'll learn an hour chasidus before davening, he guarantees them that there'll be atzlocha. You listen to Rebbe, you do what the Rebbe tells you, you have the atzlocha. Somebody was once asked by the Rebbe about uh, if he learns the Rambam Hayyami. So he told the Rebbe, he doesn't have any time, he has a deficit. So the Rebbe answered him, learn the Rambam, you won't have a deficit. The Kerch, learn the Rambam, that will give you your Bekushit to the Rebbe, do what the Rebbe wants. You find enough time for everything, you have enough Kerchus, enough energy, do everything that, uh, do, do everything that you're told. But Chlau, when you speak about Hasidus, there's a trick in Hasidus. What's special about Hasidus Chabad? Before that, people were having a very hard time to understand godliness, understand the Metzius of Hashem. Chabad found a new way how to explain people to be able to stand a little bit of the Metzius Habayr, of the Metzius of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. What's the trick? B'Tselem Alekim Asat Adam. A person was created in the image of Hashem. And just like Hashem has ten keiches with ten, ten spheres that he created with, with them the world, a person's created the image of Hashem, he has ten keiches on nefesh. If you'll study how your chachma works, how your bina works, your das, all the ten keiches, the ain't there, there's some, a little bit comparison, if you understand how your nefesh works, chachma and nefesh is a very deep chachma, it's not so easy to understand. But you could understand it, because you feel your nefesh, you feel your keiches, everybody uses their chachma bina for das. There can be some kind of con uh, of concept. You can understand a little bit of what you, of how your keches nefesh work. If you feel that, you use them. So if you understand your keches and nefesh, you'll have some kind of idea about Hashem. What's great about understanding? When you understand something, you grab the thing. You have it. If you don't understand it, it's a makif. It's above you. It doesn't penetrate. Something which you understand stays inside you, becomes part of you. It's part of your mitzvahs. And then you feel much more closer, you feel united with what you learn, it remains in you even after you stop learning, it's the rayon is still in your head. When you understand something, your mom is united with it, you're united with Hashem, you feel Hashem, and your deeper part of the neshama feels the deeper parts of Hashem, because you're learning about it, like I mentioned before, the Tamel Chaim Zochot, the Torah that Mashiach is going to give, what Mashiach is going to teach us when he's going to come. The truth is that the biggest pleasure that a person can have is about understanding. There's different kinds of pleasures a person has. A simple pleasure is when you eat. But an animal also has a pleasure when they eat good food. It's an eidler pleasure when a person hears a nice music, nice sneaking. It's a much eidler, a much more refined kind of uh, pleasure. Then you have a pleasure doing somebody a favor. You feel good. Then you have the highest kind of pleasure is when you understand something. There's nothing greater than being up to understand deep concepts. A person is able to use his head and understand many things in life. That's the greatest pleasure that a person can have. How much more if you can understand Hashem and you unite with Hashem, there's no bigger tithing than a person can have. That's what you feel. When a person learns chassidus, I once heard from one of the mashrim, from Rabbi El Khan, when you learn chassidus, like looking at a beautiful painting. Two people walk into a museum, they see a beautiful painting. One person doesn't understand it. He takes a look, he's going further. The other person is attracted by the painting. He wants to look at it. He's looking at the painting again, a second time, a third time, a fourth time. The first one tells him, why are you wasting time? What are you standing there? He says, there's a beauty here. I can't grasp the beauty. But it's attracting me. It's so beautiful. It's so nice. And the longer he stares at it, the more it attracts him. It's hard to, it's hard to, 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 it's hard to rip his eyes off the painting and go further. Somebody that doesn't understand says, what are you wasting your time? Go. The idea from when you see this, you get a glimpse, it's a beautiful picture. You don't understand everything, there's a lot more beauty than what you see. But you're looking at a beautiful picture, and it attracts you so much that chassidim are known to start learning a mimer, to learn a mimer, to learn it many times to know it well, and then they're misbeinen in the mimer. The story of a chassid once was misbeinen in a mimer at night in shul with one foot on the ground and one foot on the bench, leaning over, being misbeinen in a mimer, everybody went home after mimer. They came the next morning, he was still in the same position, he was still thinking about the mimer, it was so beautiful, it was so attractive. He was so deeply engrossed in, in the mimer that he was learning, he understood something, that he, without realizing it, a whole night went by, that was his life, that's what he was living with. 
If you look at Chesidus, there are a lot of very interesting things which, which change a person's life. I have, for example, by me, one of the things we work with is against assimilation, against mixed marriages and so on. And the Frumayit comes over to me and tells me, Rabbi Bornstein, why are you fighting with the students they shouldn't marry in the shikses and non-Jewish women and so on? I have a better idea for you. What's the better idea? Be make iron everybody. You'll have a lot more Jews, but you have to fight with them. You shouldn't marry somebody who went to yeshiva. It reminds me, my little son once, he wanted to have a dog, my little son. So uh, we told him, we're from me, and we don't keep a dog here at Dover Tommy in the house. My son says he doesn't understand. He heard me speaking many times about Giyurim and these things, and trying to, I speak about the accounts of Megir. Let's take the dog, let's be Megayrim, let's put on a Yamukip, put him on a pair of scissors. We can have a thing. For a little kid, it's it's, it's Sugapa, such an idea. But not for an older person that went to Yeshiva to tell me to be Megayrim. What's the problem? By us, even a child knows if you go learn in Yeshiva, you learn Tanya, Venevich, Hashem, be Yisro, Chelkele, Kame, Kal, Mimal, Mam, Chelkele, be Megayrim. It's not just signing a piece of paper and became a U.S. citizen or a citizen of the U.K., nothing changed inside him, it's the same person, just you signed a piece of paper, you made a lawful thing. If all those people are Megai, Shalai Kalacha would know. To become a Yid, you have to change, you have to get a brand new Neshama, and only Hashem could put in a new Neshama. All the rabbis in the world can't put in a new Neshama. Hashem told Meishu Rabbeinu, if somebody comes to you and they're serious, and they're Mechabal Tere Mitzvah, the shame Shomayim. The rabbis only do a ceremony, not more than that. Hashem comes along and that moment puts in a brand new neshama. That's what Hashem told Meshach Rabbeinu. So we make a practice, all we do is a ceremony. So Hashem who makes the nest. But just to sign a piece of paper doesn't make them Jewish because they didn't learn. You don't know that the Yitzhak Shom is different. It makes them think from, 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 from somebody that's not Jewish. I ask sometimes from the people, What's the difference between a Yid and guy? He says, well, a Yid keeps Tere Mitzvahs, a guy doesn't. What about a Yid that doesn't keep Tere Mitzvahs? What's the difference between him and a guy? Well, he still keeps a few Mitzvahs. What, are that's, what about a Yid that's Mishtamid? If he was Mishtamid, he, uh, he's probably just like a guy. I say, it's not like that. Chas Yisholm, Yisrael, Av Bishochot, Yisrael. There's a big difference. They don't know, but a child knows by us, or a person who understands you, he knows the nefesh Hashem is Yisrael, the chelikim of kami mal mamish. He gives a very strong chizuk to love every Jew and to be mekar of everybody to Yiddishkeit. Likewise, when it comes to studying Torah, many yeshivas they study Torah. It's nice and beautiful, but after a while, you know, you get to, you get tired of it. How much do I have to study? I became already a talmud chacham. Genuk is genuk. There's other things in life to enjoy. He doesn't have enough of a stimulate of a stimulation to continue to continue studying Torah. When you learn Tanya, you realize the reason why you learn Torah. Because Hashem and His Torah are one thing. You can't differentiate between Hashem and His Torah. By a person, there's a person. He also has His Chochmah. If He teaches somebody, you're connected with His Chochmah. You're not always connected with the person. Hashem v'chachmosei yachal, because Hashem doesn't have parts inside Him. Hashem is one pure thing. Hashem is not subdividable, like a person. So if Hashem has Chochmah in Him, it's not an added thing. It's part of Him. Hashem and His Chochmah are the same thing. So since Hashem and His Chachmah are the same thing, when you're studying Torah, you're not only studying Torah, you're studying Hashem. Because Hashem and Torah are one thing. If you have a concept of Torah in your head, you're united with Hashem, because Hashem and Torah are the same thing. You can't divide between them. Hashem is one pure thing. Therefore, if a person knows that when he studies Torah, he's digesting Hashem inside him, the Seiros Chum he has Hashem inside him, it's an incentive to continue learning Torah forever, for all his life. The more I study, the more of Hashem I have inside me. It keeps on stimulating him. All these things make a strong chizik with Tere Mitzvahs and everything that we do. And the last thing, with uh, one more point I want to bring up, this will finish with plenty more people who still want to speak, the idea of Achtus Hashem. By most people, the idea of Hashem Echad, there's one Hashem, there's no two Hashems. I mean, this is a very basic principle. People know there's one Hashem, there aren't two. See, this brings a chiddush, Hashem Echad, there's nothing else besides Him. Nothing exists besides Hashem, it's the only thing which exists. But we're also here, the human beings here, I'm Yisrael, and there's plenty of other things. The answer of Siddhas explains, first of all, everything is bottled in the tears, we're so small in His eyes. Also, our whole being, our whole kiyum, we're an extension of Hashem, we're part of Hashem. Without Hashem, we're nothing. Our true mitzias is that we're part of Him. So actually, there's only one thing. When a person realizes that Ein Oid Movadi is nothing besides Hashem, He's everything, so, and everything else is really part of Him, besides Him there's nothing that stimulates a person to dedicate his life completely for Hashem, because He's the only true Mitzvah. 
The more the more the more raya sichli as I've explained it according to logic. Hashem is mamish the only thing that exists. It makes a person dedicate for Hashem because it's nothing else. This is everything. Hashem is everything. There was one of the big Hasidim in Russia who, uh, before the communism took over, he used to own Rav Gerari, Shmuel Gerari. He owned all the railroads in the in the Rus- in, in Russia. And because of the contracts with the government, he had to do a lot of traveling on the trains. One of the Lubavitcher Hasidim was traveling on a train. The, in Russia, he can travel for a few days without stopping on the train. It's a very big country. Mm-hmm. He figured, he's a Hasid here. Maybe there's another Hasid. He can change a few words. He can uh, meet another Hasid and have a small fabrican together. He, go, he walks through all the cars. He sees over there the big Hasid, Rabbi Shmuel uh, Gorari, is uh, sitting there in a the car. He's misbeinen. And he's thinking about Mori Hasidus. His, f- his face is a flame. Even though it's a big fear, instead of thinking about his, about his business, he's thinking about Hasidus. And he's so involved in thinking about Hasidus, he doesn't even notice that somebody came into the room. He didn't want to disturb him, middle his blindness. He waited until he stopped his blindness. When Abshmu looked up, he sees another Hasid. He was happy to see him. Before he told him Shalom Aleichem, the first thing he told him, you should be sure when you get home, you should teach your wife and your children Ein Eid Bovadoi. That's what you teach them. That's what he was thinking about the whole time. So he came straight out of his head, Ein Eid Bovadoi, like in times of Mashiach, but everybody will realize there's one Hashem. This is all given a chayas when Islam is with, with Hasidus. Shalom on the day of the uh, of the uh, of of, of, of Yutas Kislev, the Hemsha, Chav Kislev, Chafal of Kislev, the, like the three days jumped up together. Shalom have a big Seiros and become stronger with 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 Sindus and listening to the Rebbe, being Mekusher. And we should all be zeched together, everybody doing his part to bring Mashiach to the and take it from Yad Mamish from Mashiach Mamish now. Amen. 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 So moving on from Italy to Tsarfas to France, as we learned in today's Sicha, the um Pecha and everything in the world that Rebbe Melch HaMashiach uses, that the transformation of France shows us how Mashiach is already being poiled by Mizgal in the world. So therefore it is my honor to call upon Harav Pinchas HaKoyen Pashter, who uh, came from his Mokim HaShlichas in Tsarfas to be Mechazik us as well. Zu verbringen. 
ידוע שהרבונים או היו מסכן, היו מתקן אחרי שנאסר אדמור הזקן שלא ילך עוד בוסר ולשתס יין לבד משבץ. אז מדרבות גדף, קחי אסטרי, תהילים, תפילס נסופס, סליחס וכולי וכולי. עד יציאו שלימו של הורה במן הכלא. אה? אלו ויזן. אויו ביניהם איש אחוד, חוסיף פושוט. אובו מקושר בכל עצמי לרבי, היה מקושר בכל עצמו לאדמו"ר הזקן, והוא אסר על עצמו כל אכילה ושתייה עד יציאתו לשלום של הורבה. רק בערב, אחרי מיריב, אוכל לחם יובש ושוסר קצץ מים. בערב י"ט כסלו הלך האיש ההוא עם חבריו לבייס הכנסת להזבהד, צופה ברנגל, ושם היה כל כך עייף, בלי כיחס, שנרדום בסייף השולחון. אנגיש לא פוגר, גיבור. ופתאום חולם. ורואה בחלום איך חוגגים את ההילולה דהרב המגיד באוילום העליון. ואזי ספיר צוחי נדרך. איך שכל הנשמות של הצדיקים, צדיקים רבים, אנשי מעשה, באים להתוועד בהיכל הרב המגיד. פונם פונם המים ופונם תירא. הרב המגיד היה יושב באמצע השולחן ועל צידו היה יושב הבעל שם טייב, רבו ועל צידו השני הוא אריזה לקודש יצחוק לוריה ובראש השולחן היה יושב הרשבי בעצמו רבי שמעון בר יוחיו, בר יחוי. כולם מחכים ומצפים לשמי התורה החדשה, לא סייס מיימר, מהמגיד. תחת זה פרץ המגיד בבכי, גוונט, ויאמר איך אוכל לחגוג יום הילולה שלי בידי שתלמידי היוקו זל מיניו שלי הוא בכלא ועולוב כתחוג חמור הכי חמור בשביל תורת החסידות שהפיץ הוא בכה בכה הרבה אמר הרשבי רבי שמעון בר, בר יוחאי אני הייתי המתחיל בהפצת המעיינות ואני אחראי לעשות בשביל גאולת תלמידיך. אנו פה בית דין של ג' רבונים עם האריזל ועל בעל שם טוב ואנו פוסקים פה עד פה אחת שהרב שני יור זלמן בן רבקו צורך לצאת מיד מן הכלא ואחר כך קראו את החסיד שראה כל זה בחלום ואמרו לו, אנו עושים מותך שליח למסור את המסורה הטובה הזאת לקהל החסידים ומיד התעורר החסיד וקורא לחבריו למסור להם המסורה המסמכת הרבי יוצא עכשיו מן הכלא אותו גשרים וסיפר לפניהם את החלום שראה ולמחרתיים כולם ראו התגשמו את החלום אדר אלתר ואיזה רויס בשולם מן הכל או בחשייל היו בליוזנר ובמקיימס אחרים כמה וכמה חסידים גדולים רבונים 
משכילים, עבדים את השם, ובפרט התלמידים הקרבים שלו, רבה, החבר'ה יהיה קדיש שלו, ולא מולו נבחרו, לי יש השלוחים למסור בסורו, בסורה סגאולו עושה. נורדר יידר פושטר יידר. המיינה היא פשוטה. הוא היה מקושר באמון השלמי עד למסירוס נפש בפיה. שלא יאכל ולא לישטייס, כל זמן הסירוסי. יהיה מה שיהיה. אידוסי דרנפי. יהי רוצן שנוכלו כולנו פה היים לבשר לכל עם ישראל. ולכל הואיל עומס בסורס הגאולו של כבית קידוש אס, עד מושלית מלך המושיח, גאולו האמיתיס והשלימו ומיד ממש. רק סיפור קטן, הייתי רוצה להוסיף לזה. הרב הגדול המקובל, זקן המקובלים, הרב יצחק כדורי, זצ"ל, שהיה קרוב למאה שנה נסע מארץ הקודש לבקר את פני קודשו של מלך המשיח. אלו וייסים, כולם יודעים. כששאלו, שאלו אותו על סיבת הדבר, עתיכה של הנשיאה וכולי וכולי. השיב את המענה הזה. כשהייתי ילד קטן בבגדד עיראק. היינו קבוצה של כעשר תלמידים בבית ספר, להיות לנו הכבוד הגדול לבקר את פני קודשו של הרב יוסף חיים, הבן איש חיים. והוא בירח אותנו בגימל ברוכס, שולש ברוכס. אמר שכל אחד מאיתנו לא יהיה מעולם חולה. לא יקבל מחלה. כל אחד מאיתנו יעריך חייו ושנותיו באופן מופלג. הברכה השלישית, יראה פני המשיח. בשבילי, עוד גזוף רב יצחק כדורי, נזכרנו כל הברוכס. לא ראיתי מחלה מיומיי, כמו מגוון קרנק, ארחתי יומיי ושנוסיי, ברוך השם, בג'יפסטר, יבין יונדות יום, ובנגיע לברוכי השלישי, זרועי סיפני המושיח, ועלי גגגים צמרבי. זה עד פזונט, הגות אבוך, הגות יור, ומזולתן צנצזמת מתמושיח. I have a video, a special video, that uh, it's really good to see, and if you saw it once, you probably want to see it a second time. What's a guy with a strimal doing up here at this gathering? If I had, and if I had Yechia my strimal, no, look from the top, from the bottom, it would be an interesting question of how do you put Yechia my strimal? And I would let... Uh, Ravina and figure out. But, you know, the reason I'm here tonight is because I was asked to speak. And why was I asked? It's because of a viral video that went out a couple of months ago. I spoke in Los Angeles for Yud Beis and Yud Gimel Thomas. And the San Indian. And uh, today's days, there's no secrets. Someone took a video, and they asked me permission. And before I knew it, it spread everywhere. And based on that video, they asked me to speak. So let me give you a little bit of background where I'm coming from. Mentioned before, I don't come from a Chabad background, as you can see. And I come from a Chassidish background, grew up in Borough Park. I was always a thinker, I was always searching. 
For whatever reason, when I was 17 years old, Bashkach al learning in Slabotki Yeshiva, I ended up going to Kfar Chabad for a Shabbos. This is in Tosh and Mem Tess, Yud Beis Thomas. And I came there for Shabbos. And Matsosi, I found that Shahab Rashi, this is what my soul was searching and longing. I heard Amendel, he didn't stop reading Amendel put the fast, but I was just glued to him. I heard Shiyunim, the Talmud, God gave a Shir, and then Maimon from the Rebbe, and it blew me, it took me completely. I came back to Slobodka, and my soul was on fire. I'm learning and I'm trying to grab as much chassidus as I can. I can't get enough. I learned with Reb Zalman Lando. I learned with Reb Mendel Hester. And uh, fine, I'm learning fine. Until, in the end, my badge of honor. They kicked me out of Slobotka. So I don't have a yachip in. But I have my badge of honor. I was kicked out of Slovakia, fine. I'm a serious snapper, Shvachsidis. That was, now the time that I came to Lubavitch was at Mentes. And at that time was the height of the Mashiach frenzy. Oh. <laughs> and I kind of was swept in to this feverish excitement about Mashiach. And we had Memches, Memtes, and it only became more intense, Nun, Nun Aleph, Nun Beis. And I was completely absorbed in this, and excited. And I was waiting every moment, every moment for the Hizkalos. There was no shadow of a doubt in my mind. It was so clear. And you're going to ask the question. You're going to say, I had no exposure to Lubavitch. I went to all the Rebbes in the world. But even though I lived in Bar, Brahma came on the Shtangafal to go to Brahma Heights. So you just totally knew to Lubavitch. How do you have such a metamorphosis, such a transformation, showing the Leipstadt, Elicha, such radical things? So I'll tell you. You see, initially when I was growing up, my Yiddishkeit was very superficial. I didn't really have a, 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 a deep inner appreciation of what it means to the mitzvahs, the purpose of creation, the world. And the ashkafa that I had, there was a litvish ashkafa, this, we're here to go to Elam Haba, we're here to uh, reach Shlemus and perfection. It didn't speak to me, it didn't speak to me. Quite on the contrary, there was something in me that rejected it very strongly. And when I started learning Chassidus, suddenly it came alive. The Yachtereba opened up the whole world, the whole world. And I remember learning, I started the Chara Yichud Ve'amuna. I remember learning how everything in the world, every moment is being the Sahava B'Sha, every Rega B'chol Rega V'Rega, the Volshantiv's teaching that the Ebesh is Mahava B'chol Rega V'Rega, the words that the Ebesh spoke to create the heaven is right now creating the world right now. And I remember walking in the streets of Bnei Berak, and it filled me with such joy, because more than the philosophy, more than the intellect, chassidus resonates. It resonates in the neshama, it speaks to your etzem. It fits, it goes in, it makes sense. It, it's, it, 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 the neshama is bekabalit. This was, this was my experience, fine. And then when I turn around, after suddenly Yiddishkeit makes sense, there is life, there is true neshama, there is infinite depth. The Indian of Dino the the whole purpose is down here in this world. Geval. Then I turn around, and now Mescada to the Rebbe, my initial attraction was the Chassidis. Now Mescada to the Rebbe, and I'm observing the Rebbe, and I'm observing, and I learned Basi Legani. And I read that when the Rebbe was a little boy, when he was just, and he says in the letter, me, I'm But when I went to Cheder, and even before this, his chilis raki b'dimyoyim, b'dimyoyim, tziyudei ha-giyula, exactly the Lashem, that the images of Giyula started forming in my mind. And, and again, the Rebbe is speaking that even before he starts going to Cheder, he's already thinking about the redemption of the world. Now, I've heard many stories, and you've heard, of Gidoyli Yisrael, Tzadikim, great men, who when they were very young, you saw already in them certain you know, great genius. They learned, they knew. 
But they say about the Alta Rebbe, when the Alta Rebbe was a little boy, I don't remember exactly which age, I, I didn't look this up, maybe three, four years old, the Alta Rebbe says that it was already clear by him, it became, started feeling the sense, the idea of Neshama Sani Asisi, that there's two Neshamas, an Efshul Kis and an Efshul Bahamas. This is not ordinary information. This is only a person who's destined to write the Tanya, the person who's bring, here to bring the truth in the world. This person feels this when he's two years old. This is not just information. This is not knowledge. This is an intuition. This is in a deep, intrinsic Neshama feel. So here I'm looking and I see the Rebbe writing a letter like this. A tooth, two years old, this is before even you can process knowledge. This is intrinsic. Then we read Basi Legami. And we read how the Rebbe speaks about seven generations. That, that there's two times seven generations. The seven generations at the beginning, before we, to bring the Shechina down to the world the first time at the Mishkan, beginning with Avram Avinu, ending with Moshe Rabbeinu. And then there's again seven generations that have, right before Mashiach comes, that have to bring the Shechina Lamat to Ba'aret. You learn that, Maimah, it becomes absolutely clear from the very beginning what the Rebbe is saying. The Rebbe is comparing himself, the seventh generation, to Moshe Rabbeinu. And Moshe Rabbeinu is a Goyel, and he's the Goyel, and is the seventh generation. And there's no Shaila, and it's so clear. And even though Lubavitch is in general, it took a while for us to catch on what the Rebbe was saying, even though it was so clear. And then you start looking at the years. First of all, the first ten years. I'm not the biggest historian, so excuse me if I make a little mistakes. But the first ten years from the sikhs that you learn, you see, get the sense that the Rebbe needed to create chassidim. Even though we had seven generations of chassidim, but the Rebbe needed to create chassidim on a whole different level. Chassidim balei kabolas oil that are not going to ask questions. Chassidim that are going to be soldiers and going to do what he tells them to do. Obviously, if he's going to... If the Rebbe is going to conquer the entire world, so you need to have people, you need to have a team. Who's going to do it with you? So the Rebbe for 10 years is developing Chassidim. And then afterwards, and at that time there is Shlichus already, but it starts growing. At a certain point it becomes the concept of a Beis Chabad. What's that? That's an embassy. And it reaches Kol Katzvei Teva, like we see today, a network of embassies across the entire world. Never in the history of the Jewish people was there such a network, was there such a, 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 a body of people dedicated for the betterment of mankind and for the elevation of the world. And the Rebbe starts a whole series of Mitzoyim to reach every single Yid, to be Makasha every single Yid with a Mitzvah. Appearing the world for the Gula, unbelievable. But the Rebbe cools as gives names. For instance, the Rebbe names one of the Mitzayim Neshek. Neshek means weapons. Strange thing to say, weapons. What's means the weapons? Since when does the Rebbe need weapons? Then the Rebbe comes and introduces Tzibbis Hashem, an army. Pak an army of the innocent of the innocent, the little Kindalach, children, but still, this is there's an army. And you think that Rebbe was doing a marketing campaign? How is he going to get kids excited? Oh, and the Rebbe came up and said, if I call them an army, you think that Rebbe kids around? But Rebbe said, army. And then the tanks roll out. And I, again, I'm, just, I'm processing all this when I'm 17, 18, 19 years old. There's a concept of mitzvah tanks. But the Rebbe calls them mitzvah, mo mobile, mobile mitzvah. But the Rebbe calls them tanks. And, and, the, and the people in the tanks, tankisten. Since when I, listen, I, I, I come from a Chassidah Shevelt, right, and I, I know a lot of Rebbe's. I never heard in the history of all Chassidah Shevelt, a Rebbe with tanks, a Rebbe with weapons, a Rebbe with an army. A Rebbe, and Rebbe's don't have that. The Rebbe's have Mishulach, maybe. The Rebbe's have Moistus. The Rebbe's have, they don't have these things. So right away, who has an army? Who needs an army? Who needs weapons? Who needs tanks? That's a king. It becomes clear that the Rebbe is a melech. And you don't even have, you can know. You can see this throughout the entire Nasius. It's getting only stronger and stronger. Then it reaches Admosai. And then it gets stronger in Memches and Memtes. Nun, Nun Aleph, Nun Beis, Devout. We merit to hear such in Yonim Niflayim. Such expressions that Rebbe says 
unbelievable things. And wow, 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 of course, I was completely swept up in this passion and this excitement. But then something happens. We have Chavzai and Adar, the first one, unexpected. And then Chavzai and Adar again. And then we're hit with Gimel Thomas. I have to say like this. The first Chavzai and Adar, the second Chavzai and Adar, that ever had a stroke. And I was able to continue in my amun and my belief and my attachment. It was, it was because I was able to include it and say, of course, Moshiach Tzedkeinu has to go through and there has to be an Alamas Vestedim and so on. I was able to kind of include it in my mind. But after, and after Gimel Thomas also, for a couple of months, no problem. I mean, it hurts, it was painful. But on the other hand, yeah, 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 yeah. There is a, there is a, there's Gala V'chayzev and there's Kasa and there's Gala V'chayzev and there's Gala There's Midrash and there's this, there's that. And we're waiting, we're waiting. We're still waiting for the Yizgalas every moment. But then as time passes, one year goes by, two years go by, three years goes by, it started becoming very challenging to me, personally. Very difficult, for two reasons. Uh, first of all, in my own mind, things didn't make sense, and especially if you're, you know, you're, you're talking, you're going between people, I have family, I have relatives, people start looking at you like you're an absolute lunatic. You know, it's a, a belief of Mashiach, Already, that even even before uh, Gimel Thomas was a little was pretty extreme, and Lubavitchers were known as Mishugoyim. But as I'm Mishugana, as I today, they come down. So you know, so after after two or three years, an interesting thing happened to me, and that is there were two Ruby wolves. There was an inner me and an outer me. Deep inside, at the very core. And I know this clear, this was all along, deep inside. I knew because I named the Lord we saw it with our own eyes. We saw the we saw Yechi, we saw everything happening with our own eyes. It was clear, no Shaila. And it was, so, that was my deeper self. That was my Simchas Torah self after a couple of Lachayans. And when I remember I was once in 770 in Kippur, and by Ne'ila, Mishkrim, Shema Yisrael, Shem Lekeinu, Hashem Nachod, I had no problem at that moment, at that deep inner moment, to identify my Neshama's belief at the inner core, that Zehu Zehu, this is who he is. And it was no problem. In my mind, it's clear, clear. Problem is, there is an ordinary self, there is a regular self, there is the more logical, thinking, rational, uh, rational person. And over here, I, I just couldn't, I couldn't make, I couldn't make sense out of it. And I was jealous, I was jealous when I would come to Fabreng, and I'd come to 770, and I saw people taking it to Pashtos and living with it, but I couldn't, I couldn't relate to it, it hurt me. And then the, this whole subject started causing so much pain. So much inner turmoil because it created such confusion. So what I basically did was I took the entire thing, put it in the shelf, and locked it and closed it off and let it gather dust. That means I didn't I didn't want to learn the sikhs of Nanab, not that I had anything particularly against it. I learned that here, but I couldn't identify. I lost it's almost like something deep died inside of me. And it hurt me, but it was kind of like in the back burner, stashed away, and I know life goes on and everybody does whatever they do. This lasted till like three, four years ago. Something happened. It was a time in Lubavitch that sadly there was a lot of serious tragedies. And people, and there were many people, like young people passed away, shluchim. So there was a gathering in, in Los Angeles for women. And at that gathering, a lady gathering for, for women in which they were the kinos society, the shlucha passed away and they made this kinos. They asked me to stop. So I took a walk, and before I talk, I like to think, and I like that the Indian should come to me. Like, I don't like this to, to try to be controlled. So I walk, and I say, whatever, whatever the thoughts, wherever my mind goes, I said, and this is what I have to speak. And when I got up and I spoke, and this is what came to me. I was telling the people that generally, if you get cramps in your stomach, you get cramps, your stomach is hurting you, so what do you do? There's all kinds of remedies and medicines and various different things you do to uh, hopefully help your stomach when you have a stomach ache. Fine. What happens if someone happens to be that this person who got a stomach ache 
There's a woman who's nine months pregnant and she's already almost holding by her leda. She's had a due date. And suddenly she gets a powerful cramp. So it obviously would be utterly insane to imagine this woman running to the pharmacy and looking for whatever, for peptobismo or whatever, anything to stop her stomach ache. Lady, it's time to go to the hospital. It's time to give birth. So I said to the people, you know, usually when these tzadahs happen in Klal Yisrael, we have a tradition. People took upon themselves fasting, tzedakah. That's all in the mindset that we're in Golos and we're staying in Golos. And now we have to ease the pain. The Ebersha should take away this extra gazeta no, in Golos. But yes, we're holding by the Giyula. It's time to go have a baby. Now, chas v'sholem, I didn't want to legitimize the Indian that this chad Mashiach and there has to be pain and suffering. The Rebbe said we were yoyts already. But Mitzat Sheni, that we have, the Rebbe did tell us that we have to look at everything from the eyes and the perspective that Mashiach is about to happen. And therefore, I said, Medasen machen zicher, that it's time to go give birth. Let's go to the hospital. Now, how do we make how do we make the baby be born? How do we bring Mashiach happen? So, I, and I said, the Rebbe told us clearly. Azoyvat, I remember. In Nun Aleph, the Rebbe said to us clearly, beginning in Parshas Tazriya Metzoyra, and again, that the way, Derech HaYashara, is to learn seriously in Yom HaGiyul Mashiach. So I gave a fiery speech, telling the women that they have to learn in Yom HaGiyul Mashiach. And women, it's Chusnash and Tzitkani, it's women on the... Women particularly are so macabre at Yonim, especially Yonim of Amunah. And, all, and the women that came over to me right afterwards, they said, we're masking all the way, but you should give the shir. Can I the Ignis Lily have a pervanka? The one who reads the letter should do it. So no choice. I had to commit to a new shir. So once a week, I started giving a shir in the Yonah Gula Mashiach. I taught in Yonah Gula Mashiach from the Sefer, Yulah Mashiach ala Parashah. I decided that I'm going to start with the nations. I'm going to go through week by Mamish every story in the Torah and find the Nakuda of Mashiach. He did a wonderful job at the book. He brings so many, so many in Yonim. It was very Gavaldi Geshirim. But in the course of that, he brings also the Sikhs of Manalif and Nunbeis. And it kind of forced me to learn them. And I'm learning them. And an amazing thing happened. As I am learning these, this, and I'm teaching it, which means I have to absorb it, I have to understand it, and then I have to verbalize it, and articulate it, and explain it to other people, suddenly the whole, I started getting more and more and more comfortable with the notion of Mashiach. Like a magic, but this is what the Rebbe told us. If you're going to learn it, then the Indian is going to enter into you through Torah, it's going to enter into Yerushalayim. Not only that, I became so infused with these concepts and ideas, that I started looking at the world around me, and I started noticing that all the things that are going on in the world are the Chmamish Mashiach. And this is what the Rebbe said. If you will learn, then you will open up your eyes, and you'll see in the world that everything is... And then I'm looking at the last 23 or 26 years from the, when the Rebbe spoke in Nun Beis, and I'm looking at all these years, and it becomes so clear that even though whatever happened and we have a, a, a hell in the Hester, we have a concealment, but at the same time, the world is unbelievably advancing to Mashiach in all areas, whether it's technology and so many, unbelievable. Just to mention a few, because this was happening just in the last few years, the unbelievable transformation on the political scene. Do we realize, does anybody realize the miracle that just took place in the United States of America? Just from last year, we had an administration, Eichel Yisrael, that stood for everything, everything against, everything against that whatever the Rebbe stood, whatever Yiddishkeit, whatever holiness stands for. And, and then, Be'oifen Nisi completely, that has no explanation. The whole thing went, Moshe Kapoyer, miracle, no one expected it. And now we have a whole different situation. Look at the UN in just a year of an apachu, such an apachu. And I'm coming from Los Angeles, everybody can, knows a little bit what's going on now, that mamish mountains of klipa are coming down and they're falling. Horim kadoi nagnomasu, mountains of klippas are coming, crashing down. It is so clear the world is moving towards Mashiach. Who are the two super leaders? And people will say to me, Vosat is Maybe the Abish is taking care of it. 
Hey, go look, the two superpowers in the world, most powerful people in the world, and there's a whole situation over here if they colluded with each other, Putin and Trump, take a look between the two of them. Both of them are Dafka connected to Chabad. Dafka, these are the two most powerful people. Dafka with Amish. We know what happened the night before the election. The daughter of the president is seen with, with cameras going to Daven Bamanetan. This is crazy. This is such an unbelievable thing, and you see miracles in front of our eyes, the floors, the whole world is changing. Very, very clear. It became so it became so clear to me. And then one more thing happened. Just two, three months ago, I came across a safer that was given out at this Kinnis Ashluchim last year, a safer called in Yonah Shal Moshiach. The Shalom there, Wolf, Battle of Wolf, I don't know if he's here, maybe I'll meet him, that's just Hashem, I know he communicated. And in the Sefer, of the lands, I, 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 I saw a Sefer on Mashiach, I'm always looking for something. I sat and I got so excited in the Sefer, I started learning it. I couldn't put it down for a week and a half. I learned from cover to cover, I went through the entire Sefer, the Dafas Lernan. And it blew me away. Why? He took all the Sikhs of the Rebbe regarding Mashiach and he systemized them in such a clear way and in such a, in a manner that is so nescabble in a way to be able to receive it and understand it and appreciate it and internalize it. And I started reading it again. Not only that, I started giving shiunim on the Nana Mashiach based on the Sefer. I was so blown, but it was very special. This is what happened. Now, but as, as my excitement about the Mashiach and the clarity and the understanding that there's... And then when I looked at, I looked at the Sikhs and we're, we're, we're learning them and we're seeing how this is our only Shlichus and this is what we need to do, I began questioning myself. Am I, am I fulfilling that which I'm a Shliach on heaven? Am I fulfilling my Shlichus the way I'm supposed to? And not only that, it started causing me a lot of pain that when I see... Across the entire world, from them, and I think there are so many shluchim, so many chesidim shluchim, balan asidus nefesh, devoted to the shlichus, but so many of them are stuck in the place where I was stuck. Not the chas v'sholim. If you would go deep and sit by a fabrengen and say a lot of lachaims and get to the nekuda atzmis, that inner 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 yechidusha benefish, it's got that ice cum in the amuna without a doubt. But because there is a lack of communication between the mind and the understanding and the deep, rich, powerful the nekuda sayahados that's inside, there is some kind of a disconnect, and therefore people became so afraid because it causes pain, it causes such confusion that shluchim across the world started becoming more and more and more removed from the Indian to the point that the word even irritates, the word scares, the word causes people to become, 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 the, 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 almost like a taboo word, it's a word that you don't mention, if you mention it, it creates a certain discomfort. And this started causing me so much pain and it bothered me, Chavre, don't we get what's happening over here? <laughs> Look what's happening. The Rebbe took us mamish, mamish, mamish to the threshold. He took us mamish to the place and he said, Chavre, but I need you. I need you to help me walk across this threshold. We're going to do this together. And at that moment, Chas V'Sholem, the thought that the army and the Rebbe's people devoted are deserting the mission, it scared me, it hurts me. And I was saying, Chavre, the Darf at his tongue, but that people need to come back to, to, to what, what the Rebbe gave it to us. And I really want to speak, and I know <coughs> what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is Dvarim Shutim to everyone over here. But because of the, 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 the channels that are available today, I hope that my words will reach many others Many other people, many other shluchim, many people around the world that are struggling, that are struggling, and I'm calling out and I'm saying as follows. Number one, let's not forget from Tav Shin Yud to Tav, to from Yud Aleph to Luchavs, learn all the, all the sikhs of Chelek, Aleph, Beis, Gimel, Dalet. What's the foundation of all those sikhs? The foundation is Kabbalah's oil that you do because you're told to do whether you understand or you don't understand. 
Chas v'shalom think that because I don't understand, so therefore either I'm just going to ignore two years of sickness, I'm going to stash it away, put it, lock it up, and close myself, because I'm going to It's very scary. To, how can we, then, then the other thought that occurred to me, which I think is very important. Anybody that has a tiny little bit of a whiff of chasidus knows that the root of the connection of a yid with the Abishnah, the root and the connection of a yid with Elokus, the Altareb explains, is not in Bina, it's not in your Seichel, but it's in Chachma. Chachma is the Nekudas Abitl, Lamayel and Metam simply why? Because you're connecting to Or Ein Soif, you're connecting to an infinite being that infinitely transcends Seichel, and lays Machshav at Tfisa cloud. there's no thought that can grasp him, and therefore the only Indian that, that can connect to the Abish is the Bittl of Yechida Shebenefesh, or Chachma Shebenefesh, the Koyach Ma. That's where the Yid is a Yid. The Alter Rebbe teaches us in Tanya that the Jewishness of the Jew is dependent on the Lamai Lamitam Vadas, on the craziness. And here's a very, very important Indian. The Alter Rebbe says, Behema Yisayisi Imach. The way to be with the Abish there is not a Chachem. Behema Yisayisi Imach. I am with you because I'm a Behema. Sometimes I think that wouldn't it be a nice thing, I don't know how nice it would be, but it would be a correct thing, that we should gather all chassidim, intellectuals, balei ha people that understand that I'm a nobody, there are people that have knowledge and deep and no iron basis, I'm a that have such vast knowledge, both in England and chassidim. If we should gather all of them, I would love to join as well. And mamish, I don't know if we have to take off our clothing or not, but we should all get down on all four. We should lock the door because we will put down the blinds because we don't want to make this public. And we should all sit together and go moo, moo, moo like a cow. Why? You look at me. Because when we get stuck in our own seichel, when we think that our mind is a barometer, the mind knows. This is a fish that's not, you're not connecting. And we're losing our whole. The Balshemtiv, the Chesidim, and the, we're all known as Meshagoyim. See, this is, a, is an Indian Lamaila Metamadas. It's Lamaila Menasechel. The Chiddush of the Alter Rebbe was that he took the Lamaila Menasechel and he put it down in the Sechel. The Chas Vishalim disconnect from an Indian. From, so when you're told, what does it mean by Bayel Manish? When you're told by a Rebbe, when you're told clear Oisius, there's no question. Anybody that sits and learns the Sikhs will see clearly that we were given exact instructions, what our Avoida is, and so on and so forth. It's so clear. But if we can't relate to it because our minds can't fathom it, because we have questions, because we're looking at what we call facts on the ground, so and so, we have a love and state in. And I'll add one more interest upon the Kuda. You know, the, the, the Rebbe has so many Sikhs where the Rebbe tells us that the Nisoyan right before Mashiach comes is Al Yizvayish Mitneha Maligim Not to be embarrassed from those who make fun. I want to ask my dear fellow Shluchim across the world a simple question. Today's days, who is maling on a Chabad house? Who laughs at you for doing Mitzayim? Who laughs at you? For Adonai, the whole world is happy. People from all, everybody, everybody's happy. Everybody's happy, there's a mikveh. Everybody's happy, there's kosher food. Everybody recognizes Lubavitch's Mesidus Nefesh. Everybody cherishes it, everybody. The whole world is clapping bravo, bravo, bravo to Lubavitch. Not everybody. The one thing, the one thing that people do laugh sometimes, ooh, the grapes in the heaven, the you're from the Yudai. This is the Indian of Maliginov. And in this school thought, it's the Rebbe Gizak, that this is an assignment. And a person likes his cover the house, a person wants to be respected. So a person is uncomfortable with the idea that he should be laughed on. But let me ask one more question, my dear friends. Doesn't it make sense that we know the Abishter, the way he works, we don't understand why. Oh, see, this maybe does his ex gives explanation. Before every giloi, before every relation, there's always a concealment. There's always a concealment. There's always a challenge. So it makes sense. Let me add, doesn't it make sense 
that before the greatest revelation of all of time, nothing parallels Mashiach. Nothing, nothing, nothing ever will parallel Bias on Mashiach. This is the ultimate, ultimate, ultimate evil. Doesn't it make sense in our minds that before that, there will be a concealment, and a very tough concealment, and it will be hard. The Ruhele Gerushin has said that right before Mashiach comes, to, to hold on to the Amunah is going to be like hanging from a rope. You're holding on to a rope. People are literally hanging from a rope. You're holding on. But right before Mashiach comes, they're going to take the rope, and they're going to go like this, and people are going to fly, because you can't hold on. And to hold on, you have to hold on with Mesiris Nefesh Maunish. Who is the Rishon they're talking about? Such a big the challenge of the moon. It's hard today, Chashtay, to be a Frum Yid. But, but it's not. Who is it? It's talking about believing in Mashiach. It's talking about holding on in this. We're holding right by that last threshold, and there's powerful storm winds blowing, and they're blowing and blowing and blowing, and we have to just push forward and get through it. But here's the, here's the Indian. When you learn the Sikhs, and you learn the Maimarim, and you learn the Yonagil Mashiach, then all that clipper dissipates. All that confusion just disappears. And it becomes so clear, and it becomes so levitic, and it becomes so real. So you, someone will say, Wolf, was bist du absaretna heit Lubavitch? You're telling Chassidim, I'm not, I'm telling you right now. I am really, really not, you know, a big, big, big mashpia and a big rub and a big, I don't have to tell you. I, you know, people will say, okay, the time is going to tell me what to do for 50 years, and so and so. You know what, maybe not, even if I'm not a Lubavitch. Okay, I didn't have a big Lubavitch in okay? They have a niche, they love it, love it, so. Let's say now. Let me ask you, since when does Lubavitch have the only rights in Mashiach? Meaning to say, let me explain what I'm saying. What I'm saying is Mashiach only Lubavitch? Mashiach is for the entire world. What does it mean Mashiach is for the entire world? When the Amish that created the world from the very beginning, this is the Kavana. For them there was Lech Lecha Me'artzecha. There were ten Nisyoinis. There was Akedas Yitzchak. There was Matan Torah. There was Golos Mitzrayim where Paroi was bathing in the blood of Jewish children. Do or whatever, how many children? There was six million Jews just recently went into the flames of Kiddush Hashem. There was an inquisition. There were pogroms. There was suffering, suffering. We Jews are unbelievable. Oceans of tears, rivers of blood. And what? So that we should come to this moment. And the Reb is the one who is the Achrayas to bring Mashiach. And the Reb has said, Chassidim, you have to do it. Shluchim, it's your job to do it. Don't I have the right to call out to Shluchim and say, at this moment, Chas V'Shalem, should we abandon our Shluchim because it doesn't make any sense? Because it can't fit it in my mind. And I'm so terrified to open up the Sikhs and learn it and then allow the Amunah I really have. But to allow that Amunah to come out, it's frightening, it scares us. But we know that that's the question. We're not, we're, this is not only here, it's a nice thing, Mashiach, this is it. This is what it was all about from the very beginning. For us to ignore it is a problem. So therefore, just to conclude, just to conclude, to conclude is as follows. The reason why I was able to absorb and, 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 and have this, to a certain degree, transformation from myself was because I was able to pick up a sefer that took all in Yanim what we call Oiris Tatayu and it explained it Bekelim Datikun in a manner that is gentle, not aggressive, not in your face. You can sense that there was no agenda over there. Even though he doesn't hide, there's a chi on the cover. But it's a very, very clean and clear, easy read. And you can connect to it, and he explains it, and it makes sense. Stam, if I'm coming around in general before that, and I'm hearing just a slogan or just this, it didn't work for me. Not that I'm saying Chas V'Shalom, it's a problem, it didn't work. What I am asking and saying, today is Rishchodesh Kislev. 
It's easy chas v'shalom for us to reach out and say yen and shuldik and yen and shuldik. But bottom line, 26 years later, vada or 23 years after Gimel Tammuz, vada in loy ba. And therefore, the chesed and nefesh has to be for us too over here. What's the chesed and nefesh? Are we creating enough kelim of tikkun? Are we articulating it in a manner that people can understand? In the sichas and the maimarim and the maimarim, whenever the Rebbe talks about the oyer habligavul after coming into the kelim, the Rebbe doesn't only blame the kelim for being rigid and strong and not accepting the oyer. The Rebbe blames the oyer too. The oyer too is being too aggressive. The oyer doesn't want to consider that there's a kelim because the oyer is so close to the etzim; it wants to just. But say, this is the way it is, and I don't want to be mitzamtzamim. Chavre, it's important for us as well. We need, we can't do it our own. We need shluchim from the entire world. We can't continue in a state, and I, you should know, everybody can see, I'm not a party man, I don't belong here, I don't belong there, this is all narishkai to me. Simple Indian, there's a Rebbe, Mashiach has to come, there it has to happen right now, and we can't, we have to stop being petty. We have to, all of us have to grow up and say, Yid medars tam, genigis genug, we need to make it happen. And on both ends, on the both ends, we have to join together, we have to join, for now as a Yid, to our people across the world who have such abilities to take and explain and bring things down. I want to make a practical, I want to make a practical haitza, I want to give a practical um, um, uh, thing that we can do. Sometime, I don't know now, as the Kinnis HaShluchim, we're leaving, people are going back home. Sometime over the next few months, Shluchim should get together from across the spectrum. And again, it can't be with any sense of Nitzchayness. It can't be with any sense that it has to be my way or the highway. It has to be with an achdus, with a desire for the Kavana Pnimis. And what is the, in, what, what do we want? We want to sit together, we want to learn the sikhs, but we also want that every shliach who has the, the ability to be able to take the inyanim from the B'li Gavul and be malbashit in his bodice in a way that we can understand. So we can empower shluchim across, I know it's done, but it could be done so much better and so much stronger. People, mamish geniuses, people, mamish, and mechebre from Olam Atikon, if you can say. Mamish Tikun Sheba Tikun. These are people that have abilities, they have such clarity. If we can all sit together and say, Chev, enough is enough, we're going to sit together, we're going to take the in we're not watering down the Indian. The Indian is the Indian, Kemoi Shahu, but as Zoyvi does this, we're going to bring it into Kalim the Tikun and manners that people can learn and understand. We were given a job to do it, and if we were given the job to do it, we could do it, and we will do it, and we will get this Indian done. And my Indian, what Indian? This is the Zalas. We will bring the his galus of Mashiach, and may it happen. Take it and take it and take it. Umiyad, mamish, mamish. I know, perhaps on some level, there's there is there is a, a you know. A, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking over here and saying what I'm saying, and then, 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 then you know, I, I understand that this is not exactly accordance to everybody's rules and regulations. But I'm just going to say that the Eitz Azois, all I can remember is what Mordechai said: "Im hachreish tachrishi beEitz Azois." This is not a time for quiet. And I hear what what Esther answers when Esther says, "Ubechein ava yelam nelech v'kasher avodati avodati." Whatever they did, the Mirinish Negeya, Vasa Mirinigeya. What's Negeya is one Indian Bechain, Avay El Amelech. We are all coming today to Melech HaMashiach. We're here. Lechayim, Lechayim, we should merit. There should be this Galus of Mashiach now. Jesus Boronon, the Rabbonon, the Rabbi Sain, the Borek, the Lohim, the Shohan, the Mishaloi. Oh, the Lohim, the Shohan, the Mishaloi. The Mechit Mosom, the Hon, the Yeso, the Shoboro. Oh, Mupisia, the Shodeho, Mazia, the Hon, 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 the